Hello, my name is Green, and welcome back to another Minecraft building tutorial. Today we're going to be making a pretty cool but very grey looking castle, and this is fairly easy to make, so let's get straight into it, shall we? We're going to start off by making a 15 block long wall using grey concrete. Now I will encourage you to use your own dimensions, but of course I will be including my own dimensions as well if you want to copy it. We're going to continue by making a base plan by making a 313131 all the way around base for the tower of this build and we're going to make another one identical to it at a right angle to our entrance and then we're going to continue making this base plan and don't worry if this is going too fast you will get an aerial view of it so that you can copy it very easily so we want to continue making our base layer so that it is a full rectangle making sure that there's a tower in each corner now you may be wondering why we have two towers next to each other and that will become apparent later on so so we want to make sure that the whole thing becomes one full rectangle and you can see from this aerial view how it all fits together. It also includes the dimensions of what I have used, 15 for the longer sides and 9 for those two smaller sides and it is very important that you go either that or bigger. I wouldn't go much smaller as you may find it a bit more difficult. Now it's time to start building up the walls. Now for the towers you can just build it up to whatever, just not too high, but it's these walls here on the outside that are eight blocks tall for my design here. Of course you can go a bit bigger, you can go a bit smaller, up to you on this one. If you use different dimensions to what I used, you will get a different result and that's always a great Great thing because it means that you will think differently about how you detail it and you will make your own castle but you'll have learned all the techniques from this video which is exactly what I would like so build the castle towers up just enough so that they're over the top of the walls and then once you've got all of these walls that situated directly in the middle of each tower that's quite important and then take polished andesite and put a layer directly above the wall and at the bottom this might seem odd that we're doing it now and not during the detailing phase but again you're gonna have to trust me because it will all make sense a bit later on it will make it a lot easier so we want to make sure that we put the andesite at the top and the bottom of every single one except for the front one we don't need to do that because we're going to be doing something different with the front a bit later on now you may have noticed that I just put one layer of blocks around the inside of the top of the wall and that's because we're going to be having a platform on all four sides now it's time to raise up these towers to their true height and now you have put them at 26 blocks high now that's just a number that I made up to give it a good amount of height you could indeed make your towers much smaller or even larger but if you want something similar looking to mine around 26 is good maybe a touch less or more up to you and then on the inside I've got a wall 16 blocks high and it's very important that these are not placed in the middle of the towers like we did the first one these are set two blocks back from that so that they match the corners of the towers as you can see as I'm building it around now and again layering around some polish andesite at the top and again this is important for marking out the place and then filling in the roof so that we've got our solid block now this is why we have marked that out with andesite because we will be layering around some stone brick staircase into the towers themselves each one will mimic exactly where we put the andesite earlier except for the bottom layer that will be for something else a bit later on but this is why so we mimic out exactly where the line is going to be and that's going to go all the way around the castle on every single tower you could indeed do that while you're making the towers if you really wanted to save some time but for the sake of this video and demonstrating where it is, it's much easier just to replace it a bit afterwards. You're going to be needing all of those concrete blocks anyway. And now we're going to work on the top of the towers themselves, which is actually fairly simple. We're mimicking what we just did, except one block is over the corners so that it comes out just a little bit. It's four blocks high and then topped off with some polished andesite again. And you'll notice that I've made some crenellations on the top and the bottom mixed in with the concrete and topped off with some cobblestone walls to finish off those crenellations. Then adding in some very simple but effective windows using cobblestone wall and some 
some stone brick staircase and also notice that there is some stone brick staircase on the underneath of those corners where they jut out just a little bit. The beauty of this is that it is designed with very little detail in mind. It, as you might have noticed, it's all one solid block, but then we've got these couple of lines and a couple of windows. This window on the front of the build is shifted higher than the rest, and that's because when we make the little entrance later on, it needs to be out of the way. And you'll also notice that I've put some polished andesite at the bottom as well, as it is just giving it a whole base layer. And then as you might expect, we're going to be replicating that on all four towers so that they are symmetrical, with the exception of the front face where the windows are slightly higher up. So it should look like it's really starting to come together. Yes, we got a few blank walls, but this is the size of the build we're looking at right now. And you, of course, may have something a bit bigger. Now it's time to work on the entrance itself. Now, mimicking the wall that we did at the start, leaving a large entrance space for a door. So that is eight blocks high. And then we got some polished andesite running atop, across the top and the bottom. And we're going to be mimicking the towers that we just did, but they are significantly shorter. How short is up to you? You could have them somewhere up the middle. I've got them in the lower third of the build. I don't want the entrance to be dominating at all. I want to keep it nice and simple and low down so that when you look at the castle, you look up to the main part of it. So we're going to be making two smaller towers exactly the same as each other, either side of that entrance that we just did and then connecting up that platform by filling in the floor there. And we can actually use that as a bit of space later on. So now the structure is really starting to come together and it's time to get into the nitty gritty details of this build. So let's start with this front face while we're here. Let's widen the doorway. And this is pretty much the detail style that we're going to use. Lots of crenellations. And then we've got some alternating style of like a block space, block space, block space, but they never meet in the middle we've just got some windows there's a log frame just behind the door and then to mimic an open drawbridge we're adding in some spruce log and some staircase down below with some iron fence that mimic some chains holding it open Right, and now on the front face above, we've got a much larger space to work with and there's so much flexibility here. I'm keeping it fairly simple. I've got two full pillars on the right and left, plenty of windows in the middle, and then again that block space, block space on the top. Now we've got an entirely blank canvas on the rest of our walls here, so I'm definitely going to make sure there's crenellations on the top of those polished andesite. And then I want you to kind of think about what you might do. My advice here would be keep it simple, much like I am, and keep it on straight lines. I wouldn't go horizontally. I would always keep the details going vertical as we do want the whole build to sort of follow upwards. One thing I've got is sectioned it up into threes with some windows. For this back one, I have decided to do something slightly different, added a bit more structure to it because I don't want this to be confused for a doorway. So it does look a lot more solid here. Again, this is another option that you can use on your walls if that's the style that you want to go for. You could go for something that looks incredibly solid or lots of windows and keep it very minimalist. There's a huge amount of opportunity to experiment here, but my advice would be keep it as vertical as possible. So everything has really come together now. There's only one thing that I would recommend as a sort of final touch, and this is just to add a bit of color as well, but you can have it a bit overgrown by adding some ivy in the form of leaves, mixed leaves, spruce and oak mixed in together, just crawling up the sides and the towers. It would help add a little bit of variation in the build so that you can distinguish each part a lot easier and it just gives it a little bit of color, even if it's only green. And I think that has come out pretty cool indeed. So there's actually quite a lot of space in here. I wouldn't even call this a small castle. I would say it's in the medium range. But like I said, you can use way different dimensions to what I used. I only included them because people are really interested in the ones that I use because they want exactly what I've made here. And I must admit these dimensions have worked out very well, even if I just did them randomly as I was making it. I do tend to do my builds by eye, so I kind of look at it. I think, does that look right? Take a step back. 
maybe change a block here or there, and I recommend you do the same. If you're going for a larger set of walls, those towers might seem very, very thin, so you might want to make them a bit bigger. Use some common sense, use your eye, your creative eye, and work out the scale for yourself. How is this going to look all together? So, that's it from me everyone, thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoyed this design. If you'd like to see more designs, or if you have any ideas of your own and you'd like me to build them, please leave them in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching, and goodbye!